I don't know if any everybody else is having the same problem I have, but I'm going to fire my dry cleaner because every time I put this suit on, it's getting smaller. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but <clears throat> Rogers Place, the Edmonton Oilers, Dave Semenko. What a special place for a special guy. We are here today to mourn, honor, and celebrate the life of our friend. I'm honored, honored and privileged to be standing up here today representing the players that played before him and to tell my story about Dave. September 1980, Jasper, Alberta. Brian Watson blows the whistle. Speed up. Second whistle. Slow down. Third whistle. Speed up. All of a sudden his voice says, slow down, kid. We've got six weeks to get in shape. I turned my eyes to look around and laid my eyes on the biggest man I've ever seen. And I replied, yes, sir. <laughs> that, was my, uh, that was my introduction to Dave Semenko. <clears throat> Later that afternoon, we were sitting around the uh, Athabaskan Hotel, which is what all the guys did. And Semenko saw me sitting by myself and he came over and says, why don't you buy the boys a round of beer? Again, I said, yes, sir. The beers came, the bill was $50, and he said to me, are you okay? And I said, yep, but I got no money. <laughs> he smiles and says, yeah, but look at all the friends you got. <laughs> I, had this feeling in, I had this feeling that from this point on, I would be taken care of. Little did I know the impact he would have on my career and all our careers and how he would define those great Oiler teams. <clears throat> Playing in Winnipeg was special to Dave. It was his hometown. Those games meant a lot. A chance to shine in front of his friends, his mom and dad, his brothers, Brian, Mark, and Brad. And every single game he said the same thing, boys, feed me, I'm feeling good. <laughs> and I think, uh, I think Wayne probably and Mark tried to feed him umpteen different times. I don't know how it went, but, uh, you know, he really enjoyed playing there. And I, I know this year when we got the call from the Jets to, to bring the Oiler team back to play the outdoor game, that it was, uh, it was a proud, proud moment for him. I think that, uh, you know, other than him, and I know Mark got a little testy too when we were down 4 or 5 1, but uh, Dave was the same thing. You know, he said, We're not, we never lost to this team before, we're not losing to them again. But, uh, you know, he was, he was proud to be from Winnipeg and uh, proud of his family. And he'd be so happy everybody's here today. Um, the kids, uh, there, there's 25 or 30 people here. You guys got a treat yesterday doing what the Oilers do best, which everything is first class, getting a chance to see the dressing room with Connor McDavid. And, you know, to Jason, Kelly, and Hannah, your dad loved you. Very much, you know that. Edmonton was Dave's home. He came here in 1977, <clears throat> excuse me, and never looked back. This is where his heart was. He loved the Oilers. He loved the city. Edmonton was his home. It's often talked about the great players, the all-time great players that played for those teams in the 80s. But those all-time great players wouldn't have been great without an all-time great team. Without the greatest team of all time, none of us guys would have been able to go out and do what we do best. Semenk and his cast of characters, whether it be McClellan, Hunter, McSorlin, Donnie Jackson, Fogey, Lummer, all those guys were huge, huge parts of those championship teams. And Semenk knew that. They made the game fun, they made our jobs easier, and they made our team whole. Well, the guys that played on those teams, they know that, and I often get asked what I missed most about that team, and it was unequivocally the 15 minutes before the game. I've never seen a team bond, and, and, and that's what made that team, uh, that group special. The bigger the game, the looser the dressing room became. And most of the chatter usually evolved around Semenk. Hannah, you were bang on. 
His, where are you, honey? His sense of humor was unreal. And he did bring the crowd to the feet more than once. Absolutely. He had the uncanny ability to be involved in every conversation, every joke, every prank, and never cross the line. As Hammy alluded to earlier, he had no enemies. If the room got tense or heated, he would deliver one of his patent one-liners, lighten things up, and end it with his beautiful laugh. Zemanko was class and was respected by all. His stall in those dressing room days was self-acclaimed and self-titled the Shrine by him. It was a place where he could is a place where you could sit but not stay. And if he saw you there, with a quick snap of his fingers, he'd say, out of the shrine. It was his perch, his comfort place, where he could deliver his wit and watch over all of us. And that he did. Dave was the consummate teammate to all. <clears throat> Sammy was our MVP on more nights than enough. He made it safe to go out there and play. He made it safe to waltz into any, any, any rink we wanted to, whether it be Philadelphia, Boston, Calgary, or Chicago in those days. I know myself, I skated a little bit quicker when I got into those rinks, but I always felt safe when he was around. I asked him once early in his career, I was in the washroom putting wet water on my face and I saw him dipping his fingers into the Vaseline and putting them on his eyes and on his eyes and on his cheek, and I, I thought it was for the, the dry skin in Edmonton, so I, I kind of put it in there and went like this, and he said, easy, kid. I'll take care of the fight, and you just take care of the scoring. <laughs> and that's, uh, that, 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 that's, that's what he was all about, and he made us all bigger and stronger and, and, and taller than we were. You know, for those that know him and watched him, he never went looking for it. He played the game with honor. But if anyone took liberties on anybody on our team, it didn't matter who you were, he was quick to step up and settle things. There was nobody better. But make no mistake, Cement could play. He was a goal scorer, a point getter in Brandon, came to Edmonton, played a couple years in Oaha, and uh, as Wayne alluded to earlier, got player of, the, player of the week and goals in New York and big goals in the playoffs. And, you know, he could play it either way. <clears throat> you know, and to this day, his humor and wit is unmatched. You know, he longed to hear Slats call out, Graciari, Semenk, you're up. You know, Wayne alluded to earlier about that day off, which I think Wayne was looking at my notes, but, you know, that's what Semenk was all about. And, you know, I know that, uh, I know that when, he, when he started a game, when Slats would come in and, and uh, read his starting lineup, and you know he'd say, "Gretz, Yari, Smink, you're up. Kevin and Foggy." Smink would kind of smir smirk and say, "Hmm, I guess he's slumping again. I got to get him going," which he always did. <laughs> there are team guys, and there were teammates, and Smink was a teammate to all. Didn't play any favorites. It didn't matter if you were in need; he was there for you. I came into town last year for a game and called Semenk. He says, yeah, come on down. I'll meet you in the lobby, and we can hang out and watch a period or two. <clears throat> I realized, first of all, you can't get around this palace without about 10 laminates hanging around you. And he knew exactly that. And he says, uh, he says well, let's go. I said, OK. No, he goes after you, knowing damn well that I was going to get kicked out. I wouldn't be able to get in anywhere or get refused, and he stood around laughing, and he says, follow me, just outside here, which I did. And it was like the parting of the Red Sea. In we walk, no lamets. Smank looks at me and laughs and says, and you thought only Gretz could walk around this arena. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we go upstairs, I watch him walk, tall and proud, work the crowd to perfection. And I said to Smink, I didn't know what he was doing. I said, what are you doing? What's your, what's your role now? He beams and says, I'm the ambassador. I said, of course you are. He smiles that big smile and laughs. And he says, who else? And I said, nobody, buddy. You're perfect for the position. He was so, so happy 
and so proud to still be involved with the Oilers and representing them. As tough as Semenk was, in the end, it wasn't his fight to win. As we sit here today, we should all smile knowing we knew the hockey player. Knowing we knew the hockey player, we knew the man. And we were all better for that. Semenk knew he was loved by all, and we can all take comfort in that. Rest in peace, my friend.